um, just announcements this week. Um, yeah, guys, we, we just want you to, um, yeah, let's, let's stand together in this time, okay? And the best way to do this is by praying, okay? So every Monday, every morning of the week at 6 o'clock, you can Zoom in. And on Monday evenings at 8 o'clock as well. And then we'll pray together for our nation, you know, for this um, time to get over. And also just proclaim God's goodness every day. Then on Tuesday morning, after the prayer meeting at 6.30, we're going to start something new, which is we're going to study the book of Daniel in detail. Okay, he was not just an amazing man. He had amazing visions. Okay, he had an amazing life and a testimony. So every morning, or every Tuesday morning at 6.30, we're going to study one chapter. Um, you can go onto Church Suite or on the website and register. And once you're registered, we will send you the Zoom link. And we will also tell you every week which chapter we're going to um, study and ask you to read the chapter beforehand. Um, this is really exciting. I've heard a little bit about it. And I can really tell you guys, it is mind-blowing. So please join us every Tuesday, the next few weeks, at 6.30 in the morning. I know it's early, but believe me, it's worth it. Um, then on Wednesday night, we have small group combined small group on zoom again so please guys let's join together and it's just so nice to see everybody's faces so come on join on to, on wednesday evening then on friday or we'll, on, on thursday evening we're going to start with legacy um and i really want to encourage you if you haven't done it or even if you have done it you need to get a little bit excited about what God is doing in your life and look back and deal with stuff that's been in your life. So please register for Legacy for Thursday. You can also do that on the website or you can just do it straight through Church Suite. Giving. Hello. Um, hi, everybody. I'm, I'm doing the offering message this morning and I'm going to keep it short. I just want to read one verse out of Proverbs 4, verse 23. It says, keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Uh, I've just, this whole week, I've been pulling out weeds out of our back garden to, to prepare it for a return. Um, and seven bags full of, IKEA bags full of weeds. So, and it was, you know, I found some weeds with 30 centimeter root systems and, um, Anyway, that's got nothing to do with the offering message, but it sort of ties in just from a spiritual side to really um, guard our hearts against the roots of, the Bible talks about roots of bitterness. Um, but any, anything, you know, that, that creeps up in our hearts, um, especially if it comes to even finances, you know, I, I'm just so convicted that, you know, there's because of disappointments of the past or even a situation we're in at the moment, you know, our hearts can be wrestling through these things. And I just want to really encourage you in this time to keep your heart with vigilance for from it springs for, for from it flows the springs of life and, um, i just want to encourage you with, from a from a ties and offering perspective that you know god wants us from our hearts to give with uh with uh, you know, from the goodness of our hearts from the love and the caring of our hearts be it alms giving um be it tithes be it offerings I just really want to encourage you guys to go search your hearts, see if there's anything there that's not from God and, and get rid of it, like the weeds that I got rid of this week. Make sure that you keep your heart with vigilance. So that's the message this morning. And, uh, with that, uh, we're not going to have time to take up the offering this morning. But uh, yeah, please do take this with you, Proverbs 4, verse 23, and go meditate on it during the week. Uh, be it your offering online uh, through a bank transfer or through church we do all these options we, we cashless system now but um, God is God is going to bless uh, bless that giving uh, may he bring tenfold increase of that so with that I'm just going to pray a short prayer on the, on the offering of this month for this week yeah. Father we thank you for your goodness we thank you that you provide for us Lord we thank you that Lord you um yeah, you keep our hearts clean, Father God. You are the you are you are the one that brings water 
living water from the bottom. We want to, we want our hearts to overflow like the springs of life, Lord. We want our hearts to overflow with, with living waters, Father. With that, we just bring our hearts this morning, Lord, even towards our, our finances. That's in this, especially in this time, such a struggle for all of us, Lord. We're wrestling with: what Do we have enough for ourselves? How do we give? I pray, Father God, as a church, a show for our representatives in the UK, Lord, that we will be a giving church, a church that can bless other nations from the wellspring of our, of our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. That's all for me. Thank you. Yeah, yesterday I um, I went all the way to do Parliament buildings um, with my uh, my bicycle. And it was a, it was a strange feeling to to actually go into mid city, and it's it's relevant uh, well relatively quiet. You know, you uh, you drive in the streets, you ride, and um, normally you know you have this fight to just stay on the road, not to have people you know overriding you, and you know there's always um, such a commotion in the city. People are walking. Um, and they are keeping their distance for sure, um, but uh, there's there's almost a, a reservation, a, a reservedness over people's um, faces, uh, not to to spend time with one another to keep their distance, but uh, also you know almost um, so scared to to laugh, almost so um, scared to just um, you know uh, share with one another and and just share life's experiences with one another it's almost like zombies walking in the streets of london you know it's a strange feeling um so i went all the way to parliament buildings prayed there you know i was just reminded for those guys that did the netherlands trip as well i was just taking that same picture just to remind myself of um, what god has done in the past um and um and just prayed over you know parliament buildings and the decisions being made there um and um, you know, I was I was just having this moment where where God was saying to me, you know, everything tells us that life is actually coming to a standstill, and you know, we're not supposed to uh, be excited at this moment. We we must just survive and get through this to get to the other side. And yet, I've got this deep yearning inside of me the last few weeks. And I'm um, listening to the people at the intercession in the mornings as well. Uh, the same kind of feeling of anticipation, of an expectation of God to do certain things, you know, for God to, to do something in our hearts. And it's even though it's a time of rest, it's almost like not a passive rest. It's not a it's 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 a time of an active rest happening within our lives, you know, pre preparing for something to come. Was something that God is going to do um, in and through our lives. And, um, and I want to encourage you this morning uh, through a few scriptures just to come to that place where you will actively start to rest and not waste the time that you are in. Um, not to, to, to wait for something to happen, but to enter into a place with God that will allow you to experience the fullness um, of His, His um, power in your life. And um, so the one word that we received at intercession was Ezekiel uh, chapter 16, verse 6. When I passed by you, maybe I should just um, share that with you on, on the link as well. And when I passed by you and saw you wallowing in your blood, I said to you in your, in your blood, live. I said to you in your blood, live. And, um, and it's for me a time where God is actually saying to us, live, <laughs> you know, start to, uh, to, to, to do the things that I um, have um, in store for you, actively pursue them. Now, this scripture is actually in the context of um, the unful, un, uh, uh, faithful bride um, of Israel in Jerusalem at the time. It's, um, you know, Jesus that, or God that is actually saying to, to the bride, to, uh, to Jerusalem, that uh, she's been unfaithful. And yet in the midst of this, God starts to beautify her, speak life over her and start to beautify her for his purposes. Um, and at the end of this chapter, if you read through all of it, 
it comes to a phase where it says that God is reminding them of his covenant with them. That is actually reminding them of the promises that he still faithfully is making toward um, Israel and toward um, Jerusalem. And therefore, um, I want to remind you of God's faithfulness over your life in the midst of COVID-19 and, and, and lives have, have changed. Things are not the same anymore. There's so many things that we need to adapt to. There's so many things that we must reconsider. And yet, you know, we are not deserving of God's goodness and faithfulness at all because we've not been faithful all along. Um, and yet God is stirring within us an expectation for his faithfulness to be revealed over our lives. And, um, and it's truly the time of suddenness, the time where we are waiting for something to happen and explode and God is preparing us for such a place. And I want to say to you this morning, the, the word that I want to trust that God is going to do in your life is to start to prophesy over your circumstances, to start to prophesy over the visions in your lives, to, uh, to start to prophesy over the promises that God has over your life, over the people that you even gave up on, the people that, um, that God has entrusted unto you to pray for, and you've lost hope in them. Um, it's almost as if God is saying, don't give up. Don't, don't start to, um, to forget about the things that, that, uh, that I want to do in their lives. And so um, this morning, I want to encourage you that there's three things that I want to leave with you. The first one is, God is saying is, do it from the rooftops. Start to, to declare those prophecies, those words, those promises from the rooftops and make it known to people around you. Matthew 10 verse 20 to 22 says, um, and then also 26 to, to 30. As if God is saying, let's get this straight. I will recognize you if you have made it a priority to recognize me. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death. And the father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures, and listen to this, and the one who endures to the end will be saved. So have no fear of them, verse 26. For nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. But I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whisper, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Just a few things that I want to say about this. Proclaiming from the rooftops. A time when God wants us to prophesy, speak over our circumstances. But it says here, the, the, for, for this is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. And... Um, and this is such a beautiful picture, you know, where God wants to come and partner with us and, and he wants to reveal himself through us. And it says that we must endure till the end. It, it comes to a place where it says that we must acknowledge him because if, if, if we acknowledge him, he will also acknowledge us before the Father. So this acknowledgement is a place where we testify of the goodness and the provision of God over our lives to testify about anything that God is doing now. And you might say to me, you know, I don't have a significant testimony. I don't have a lot to say. I don't have a lot of things that God is at this stage doing miraculously in my life. But um, acknowledging what the Father is doing in your life is the small things. Those, um, you know, uh, blessings of financial breakthrough of, of even the, um, the person that you spoke to and God touched their hearts. 
start to speak about it, start to uh, reveal it, start to proclaim it on the rooftops. Because, you know, it's not about his glory. And I want to say in these days, it's not a time to promote ourselves, our ministries, or to even exploit our circumstances so that people will know about Shofar and about our ministry and about... It's not a time for that. It's a time to glorify God, to make his name great, to even use those moments when in the morning you put his, um, you know, worship music on to, to, to declare over him his goodness and his faithfulness over your life. But uh, live lives of gratitude, lives where, you know, we can also recognize that that in the midst of what we are going through, there is so many things that we don't have and that we can be cross about for God or for the government or for our circumstances. You know, it's that um, uh, loss of space, <laughs> being confined in your house, uh, specialized food that you cannot get on the, the shelves, or even that soft triple ply toilet paper that you normally buy and now you only get the one ply <laughs> and uh, and we complain about it and um, but it's a time where we are through lives of gratitude thanking God for what we do have and and then you know if you read Ezekiel it's so important to to know that God don't want us to forget the times that he has been good to us the times that he did take us out of our blood and start to clean us up and prepare us for beautiful things to, uh, to happen. But proclaim. Proclaim the goodness of God. Proclaim is even to more than recognize that God is working in your life to, to tell people about who is the person that is changing your life. Um, to tell people about Jesus. P people don't want just moral lifestyles and to embrace moral lifestyles over their lives. They want to see the power of God move. Um, they want to know that, you know, there's a person called Jesus that, that can change circumstances, that can bring healing to sickness, that can even provide in all their circumstances. And then, you know, that people will not see your life change as just a, a, a discipline, a good thing to do, but because you've got a living relationship with a person. It's a time when we now must proclaim Jesus as the Savior, that we must actually bring him to the front and not just think that our circumstances or our good lifestyles will impress people because it's not about us. It's about glorifying him. It's about experiencing his power happening through our lives. And so... To trust for big things in other people's lives, not just your own life. This is a time when you need to go and actually sit down and pray for other people and their breakthroughs and to trust God for it and to even hear from them, did God really come through for you? To trust God for big things in people's lives. To, uh, to recognize the Father in your life, but also to speak about him. You know, I was so blessed this week um, to, uh, to on, go on Facebook and see my brother-in-law leaving a message um, there. And he said, you know, everyone is doing challenges these days in the midst of the, you know, Corona lockdown, Corona um, virus lockdown. And um, he said, you know, I chose to do something different. I want to challenge you to tell people about Jesus to tell people about his faithfulness because the God that I serve I know that you're going to think that I'm crazy and that I'm um, that I'm even foolish to uh, to do something on on the, like this on a social media platform but I do it because he loves me and he takes care of my circumstances and my family and so I want to say to you I was so proud of him just the way in which he engaged on a, on a platform like that and, and declared to the world, Jesus lives. You know, he's good to me. He's good to my family. Um, I want to become like him. And so, so I want to say to you, when, when it gets to our testimony at this stage and our proclaiming toward um, uh, people about Jesus, um, 
We must direct them to Jesus, the ultimate savior. Take the pressure off ourselves and not be the savior of people, but rather to take them to the savior, to tell them about the savior and that things are not always right in your life, but that makes people to associate with you and to get excited about what Jesus can do for them as well. Not about what you can do for them, about your contribution and, and all the things that we so easily want to, uh, to have people recognize that we are doing for them, that we are the saviors, that we are the people that actually are doing good, but that we serve a Jesus that is all powerful and, and has the ability to change not just our lives, but their lives. And um, I've seen this in, in the life of the apostles, you know, even though they were these mighty men, you know, in the beginning, just, you know, uh, a few fishermen, a few people that was coming from all walks of life, they became these men leaders in a community that wanted to serve Jesus. And yet in the midst of this, they had to see Jesus first. You know, it was beautiful to know that Thomas even had to come back to Jesus and have a second or have a, had an encounter with him as an apostle because Jesus had to reveal himself to Thomas in order to commission him for the work that he was supposed to do. And I want to say to you, you know, even though Thomas missed the first encounter with Jesus and, and he was doubtful about did Jesus really um, reveal himself to, uh, to, to the rest of the um, apostles, uh, he had that second time. And I want to say to you, there's, there's a time now in active pursuing this rest um, where we need to, to push into what Jesus is doing in our lives, but we must also direct other people to find him, to, uh, to proclaim him um, over their lives as well. And so um, endure is the, uh, the other one that is mentioned here. Endure. And the picture that I got this week um, in intercession is a highway of tar being constructed and being made ready. And tar in um, the dictionary that we have here um, speaks of wilderness used to cover dirt roads, um, wilderness and flesh, and it can therefore point to receiving the ability to overcome the influence of the world and fleshly lifestyle. And, um, and also then highway is a connection. And connection, it speaks of, a highway is a connection between one part or season of your life and the next phase the Lord is taking you to. It shows that the Lord is giving you direction and that you, and listen to this, and that you will remain steadfast in your faith. The picture that I've seen is, is a highway, a tall highway, and God wants to connect you with the next season in your life and you will endure and you will be set fast in your faith and you will be able to overcome your circumstances. You will be able to, to even draw closer to him at the time and hear his heart. The second thing that I want to say after the fact that we first of all need to proclaim on the rooftops is the one of vigilance. Secondly, Matthew 10 verse 16 says, behold, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Um, I was washing the windows. Yeah, at the back, I, I, I think we, uh, we find all kinds of strange things to keep ourselves busy with these days. Um, but uh, I, um, the one morning stood up and, and I was um, after the intercession time, um, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, but why is the window so dirty? And, um, and I thought, you know, this is so strange. I, um, I immediately took a bucket and, and I started to clean the windows. And um, even while cleaning the windows with that um, thing that you uh, do the window cleaning with, there was these lines. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, clean even the lines because sometimes... You know, we find in our lives blurriness, not total cleaning, not total um, vision. 
And I believe that this time that we are in, God actually wants to come in and heal our vision. He wants to come and restore for some of us our vision in such a way that we will be able to see him clearly, to see the things that's on his heart more clearly. Um, but it's going, to, it's going to cost us a, a discernment, a discernment not to be blunt, but to be sharp in the spirit, to see the things that's on his heart. And this means that we must first of all, and we know this, but I want to remind you of this, be founded in the word, being rooted in the word of God, to know his word and, and to know, you know the purposes of his word in our lives. And also the apostles' doctrine, the fact that, that we, you know, even interpret the word in such a way that as the apostles taught us, but then also to be vigilant to the false prophets that's um, running around. And I want to just say this, you know, I believe that there's many, many false um, prophets and, and, and even those little distractions in our lives at this moment that keep us from experiencing the fullness of God in our lives. And we must be vigilant to deal with those. We must not be distracted. Now, there's two things that normally pulls us away from God's will. And the first one is that one of surrender. One of the most difficult things that we often find ourselves to be confronted with. Surrender. To put my will and my needs second so that God's will in my life can be established. Now, even Jesus went through this confrontation and we know that he, he passed the test. Maybe God just said no when he asked the question. <laughs> but Matthew 26 verse 39 says, Yet not as I will, but as you will. So Jesus being in in the last of his preparation to go to the cross, ask the Father, let this cup pass me by. And maybe the Father just said, no. <laughs> if you want to do my will, you're going to have to fulfill the full uh, picture. But Jesus, being so mindful of what the Father is doing in his life and being so committed to the cause of, of the Father in his life, said, yet not as my will, but as your will be done. And I, I want to say to you, in the midst of even proclaiming on the rooftops, we must not be distracted. We must not be sidetracked. We must not, you know, there's, there's so many resources these days that's overwhelming us. And there's so many people that prophesy. I, I've heard so many prophecies the last week. You know, I don't know even what is really going to happen because um. Everyone proclaims to be a prophet these days, especially within the global environment. I, th I listen to some people's um, um, interpretation of the words that they received, and I think maybe it was just for them. <laughs> maybe it was just a word that was applicable to their lives and their personal, maybe just for their congregation. And yet they proclaim it as if it's the, the full truth, the whole truth, the, the total truth. Um, picture of what God wants in these days. But I want to say to you, to not be distracted, to, to not to be vigilant means that you and I know God's will and hear his voice regularly. Dallas, Dallas Willard um, wrote this in his book, Hearing God. I fear that many people seek to hear God solely as a device for securing their own safety, comfort, and righteousness. For those who busy themselves to know the will of God, however, it is still true that those who want to save their life will lose it. My extreme preoccupation with knowing God's will for me may only indicate, contrary to what is often taught, that I am concerned with myself, not a Christ-like interest in well-being of others, or in the glory of God. <laughs> this place of, of being vigilant means that you and I must make sure that we understand that there's a bigger picture. It's not just our lives. It's not just, you know, the things that is applicable to us, but there's a bigger picture in God's sovereign work within us and other people's lives that 
needs accountability. <laughs> that needs people to speak into our lives. And, and when other people with uh, prophetic gifts even um, reveal that they are hearing the same thing from God. But also for those who are so prophetically um, inclined these days and, and those who, who, who hear the will of God, to do it in love and humility. Because this is the greatest challenge within, you know, the prophetic um, environment that we are stepping into is that it can so easily be done without love, without the humility to actually just lay down your own life and, and, and stop thinking that you are the only prophet. Like um, Elijah was confronted so many times about. Oswald Chambers said, God never gives us discernment in order that we may criticize, but that we may intercede. <laughs> you know, we use the words that God gives us, the, the understanding of his world sometimes to, um, you know, to even criticize people, criticize ministries, criticize those around us because we've heard the, the voice of God. And yet... It's actually just a time to intercede. It's a time to sit at the feet of Jesus and start to pray his will into being. And that's why I'm saying this morning, it's actually a time to prophesy. It's a time to speak in that inner room over your circumstances, over the people that you love and the people that you're trusting God for. It's a time to intercede over the, the revelations that God has given you so that it can come to fruition and that God can show you the next step. And yet we are using these things to proclaim to the world because we want to become the next great prophet. We want to become the next great person that people will follow. And we are even using the, the vulnerability of people at this time to proclaim our ministries, <laughs> our um, contributions. And so, so I want to say to you, this morning, the second thing, and I've, I've mentioned the one, the first one to be surrender, the difficulty to lay down our lives and to, um, you know, to do the will of God. But the, the second one that is often difficult when it comes to discernment is the one of peace, finding real peace. Um, and I've found in my own life, the more I pray, the more God can reveal his heart to me. And the more I can find peace in all the circumstances that I'm in. Because peace grows as we pray. And I want to say to you today, you know, don't think that you've got enough peace. <laughs> um, pray more so that God can take you into a deeper revelation of who he is. Because the more you know about his will and his way of doing things in your life, the more he can start to give you the confidence to, to go about in finding that inner peace. Because discernment is not just about finding the will of God. It's about finding that peace that you are in the perfect will of God. And, and peace will grow as we pray. We must pray more in order to, to have this um, peace grow in our lives. God works within a framework of circumstances around us, people, revelations that um, is, um, is all coming together in our circumstances so that we know that it's divine. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been divine. You know, it's, it's when you start to, to see the pieces fall together in your life and in your circumstances that you know that it was not it, it could not have been you or, or even, you know, your efforts or even your um, anointing upon your life that could have done this, but it was God himself. And so, so that peace that we find ourselves in and that we must discern and let grow in our lives is the one where we know that God sends people sometimes over our path. And, and I want to I want to say to you, there's a few things that I want to even mention this morning that I want you to be vigilant over because I, I believe that you must get this in order to go into the new season that God wants to take us. Because if you think that you are the only one that's going to find revelation from God and going to find yourself in knowing the will of God, you're going to miss the point. Because people come over your path at the right time to speak into your life and to give you revelations of God that 
that makes the puzzle pieces fall together, that makes the puzzle pieces to actually, you know, um, be understandable. And so, um, so I find that it's those moments when a Bible verse that keeps on speaking to you through the rest of the day, you know, is haunting you. <laughs> it's that Bible verse that gets stuck in your, your mind and for the whole day you're milling around it and you're thinking about it. It's maybe a thought or a conviction that keeps on growing in you. Um, that thought that you cannot get rid of, it's, it's almost a picture that, that you want to, um, to talk about. It's, it's something that, you know, that, um, that was revealed to you and uh, it keeps on growing in your life. It's that something that people said or a person said around you in a conversation and for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week, you think about it and you realize that it's, it's more than just words that were spoken. It's a confrontation, a direct confrontation with a very specific thing that God wants to uh, talk to you about. A very specific thing that God wants to reveal to you. A very specific thing that God wants to surface so that you can have a conversation with him. That, that early in the morning cup of coffee sitting in his presence and, and saying, God, why did you even say that to that person? You know, sometimes it's even a negative word that that person spoke in that conversation and you so confront, confronted, you feel offended even by what they said. And then you ask God, God, but why is it affecting me so much? Why is it such an issue? And God starts to reveal to you an opportunity that suddenly just opens up. And that's why I'm saying it is really the time of suddenness. You know, it's, it's opportunities that we didn't even pray about, that we didn't think about, but it comes our way and we realize that this must be of God. This, this, is, this is not just natural. And I'm not saying this morning that all circumstances and all suddenlies and all crises and all new things are of God. But what I'm saying is that that peace that we find ourselves in is the place where all these circumstances, all these things work together so that we know that it's divine. It's above ourselves. It's more than just our will. It, um, it's also those things that returns with a vengeance. It becomes harder to stop. More, the more you try to get rid of it, um, the more God starts to bring it back and put the, the conversation on the table. Um, so I want to say to you, your circumstances, people, um, the word of God, revelations, all speaks together in our lives so that we can know that God wants to lead us to a place of his divine encounters with us and to lead us and to make his will known. Because it's not just about the end destination again. But I also believe that the devil is ready to devour the babies in our lives. Those amazing moments that we have with God, those promises that we almost forgot about and that we... Um, don't want to prophesy anymore on because we, we, we thought that it's long gone. It's past. But you know what? God is speaking into each one of us at this time, special things that you must treasure, things that you must really take um, to heart, things that you must really take serious. And we know that, you know, I've, I've seen this over and over in the ministry that um, the devil always wants to kill that which is just starting, that which is still in childbirth stage. Revelation 12 verse 4 says, His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. And so the enemy is waiting for, you know, those promises in its child's shoes to be deleted, to be um, wiped off the table. And yet it's time to prophesy over them. It's time to ask God's protection over them. It's time to nurture them. It's time to, to make sure that it grows to a point. And I watched a movie this week with the kids, me and Malai. Um, I think it's something like, 
uh, African wild holiday. I can't remember what exactly the, the title is, but um, it was about these elephants that, um, that they would rescue when um, the, the mothers were poached uh, for their, their tusks. And, um, and then they would spend some time uh, with the, the little babes uh, for quite a while, but for a time when they are strong enough to, to get back to the rest of the herd. And it's, it's clear that if that little baby elephant is left to his, his own survival, he would not make it. I was just reminded again that you know, there's promises that God has given you, things that, that is dear to, to you and God. It's between you and God that you must go and nurture again. Um, this is such a typical picture in the Bible. You know, even when Jesus was born, you know, Herod killed all the babies because he was so afraid that the potential of that baby that will be born will be the next king in Israel. You know, the enemy is always you know, so confronted, so, um, yeah, almost um, afraid that the potential within that baby that God has birthed within you will come to fruition. And then also, when it comes to discernment, God wants you to remove the tears in your life, um, to take away the things that is not of him. Matthew 13, 30, it says, let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Um, now, the context of this we know is the sons of the evil one um, among us, the, the Matthew 13, 41, maybe I should just rather read it. The son of man will send his angels because that was the interpretation that Jesus gave to his disciples, because they didn't understand the, the parable. And they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. And that place will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun. And I want to remind you of this, that in the midst of circumstances, when it looks like the world is overpowering us, we Things are not working and, and uh, we almost forgot about those promises. It's the righteous that, righteous that will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. You as ears, let him hear. Um, it's a time when, when God wants you to remove, to unplug, you know, those weeds in your life. Those, those things that's not of him. Um, some relationships are not even good for you anymore. Some relationships are just not doing you good anymore. And God wants you to, to even reconsider them in this time of actively seeking his will. And, uh, and then for some, it's just the lust of the flesh. Things that God wants to unplug out of your heart, out of your life, so that you can start to live for him wholeheartedly. The last thing that I want to mention before I give you a few pointers toward living life, live, is um, the third one is to live. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, verse 4 to 14. Um, and I'm, I'm going to just remind you of it. Thus is the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I've sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for its welfare. You will find your welfare. For thus is the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Do not let your prophets and your div diviners who are among you deceive you and not listen to the dreams that they may dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. For thus is the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to the place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not evil, to give you a future and a hope. 
then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Love where you are in captivity. Don't let your captivity rule over you. Don't let the naysayers in your life um, prevent you from, from speaking life over those dreams, speaking prophecies over the promises of God in your life. Live in God's promises. Don't be distracted by the mountains before you now. Know that, that God's promises is, is greater than those. But also know that the more you flow, the more you grow. <laughs> the more you commit yourself to, to trust God for, for, for those things um, in the spiritual realm to, to be activated, the more he can actually start to teach you when you are following your will versus his will. The more you can, can spend time with him, the more you will hear his voice above the voices of the world and the voices within yourself. <laughs> your own world. I want to encourage you this morning, you know, start to live life. Stop waiting for one day and someday. Start to live right now. And I want to end off this morning and just say to you, how do we act upon the command to live? And, and unfortunately, I can't show you the PowerPoint now. I'll put it um, on YouTube and um, Facebook afterwards. But um, Go and write them down if you can while I'm speaking now because I want you to actively actually work through these things in your quiet time. And first of all, I want to say stop procrastinating. Stop to, uh, to be in a passive rest. Start to be in an active rest, a place where you start to listen to the voice of God and get excited about it. Secondly, Thank God for his faithfulness over your life and remind yourself of what he is and has been doing in your life until now. Thirdly, revisit God's promises of the past. So let's just get back to it. First, you're going to stop procrastinating. Secondly, you're going to, to thank God for his faithfulness in your life and even remind yourself. Go and write those down. Journal them. Write them down for yourself so that you will not forget them. That you will be reminded in such a way that you will, your picture about God will again just be straight. And then thirdly, to, to revisit God's promises of the past. To, to think about the things that God last told you that's going to happen. You know, um, COVID-19 has changed our lives um, Fully. It's changed our lives. You know, the dreams that we had, the goals that we had within the next three to six months has changed dramatically. The things that we thought we were going to pursue and, and follow um, dramatically changed. But one thing that I know about God is His promises in our lives are not bound to time. His promises in our lives are, are not bound to our circumstances even because He can work everything together for our good. And it sometimes even look different than what you think. But revisit those promises of the past and make sure to, to kindle them again and to have those conversations with God. And fourthly, see what is in your hand. See what God is giving you now to fulfill and to be faithful in the things that he has called you to. Number five, discern what is of God and what is your own fleshly desires. When you wrote them down, when you even wrote those goals down and those dreams that you have, God ask God, God, is this really from you? God, did I really have a, a burning bush moment with you where you spoke to me and you gave me direction? Is it, Father God, that thing that you want to do in my life? And then number six, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the commands from the Father that is not completed in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those commands um, that, um, that you've not completed yet, that you still must go back to 
in order to go and fix them, to make them count in your life, to learn the things that you, that you must. Um, and then number seven, write the promises of God down. Circumstances, promises, relationships, dreams. Write them down and start to, uh, to get excited about them. Number eight, take a stance in the spirit and declare life over your circumstances. Promise, relationships, and dreams. Start to, to take a stance and to, to, to prophesy over um, those things that God has revealed to you. Those things that, um, that God wants to do in your life. And then number nine, pray God's protection over the little babes. The things that the, the enemy wants to devour, that he wants to take away from you while it's still in its baby shoes. Ask God's protection over it so that it will come to fruition, that it will become the beautiful tree that, um, that you can find even shade in. And many others will find um, their shade in. Number 10, ask the Holy Spirit's guidance on what the next step must be concerning these promises. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what is the next thing that you must do you know, when you get out of lockdown or even now, <laughs> maybe it's just sending a message to somebody. Maybe it's just a confrontation even with um, a past hurt in your life. It's maybe just a, a person that spoke into your life and, and, and God wants to reveal it to you so that he can, can get you ready for the freedom that is necessary for the next season. The last one, number 11, love. God will lead you, reveal his heart and reveal his heart to you. God will lead you and he will reveal his heart to you. You know, I'm convinced of this, that, you know, God is so committed. He's, he's so desirous to, uh, to reveal his heart to you. He's, he's in such an act. He's always in an active place, you know, ready to speak to us, to, to say to us what is the things on his heart, to say to us what is the things that is next in line. And so I want to speak the beautiful blessing um, that was uh, spoken over the Levit Levitical order um, in the Old Testament over your life today, because that's so true for me about your life and God's commitment toward it. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I want to read it again and then we're going to end off in prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and he be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Father, thank you that we can embrace this this morning. Your desire is to take us out of our blood and Father God, this morning clean us to put beautiful adornment, Father God, on us and to, uh, to beautify us, Father, as your kids. And Father, to, uh, to celebrate over our lives, Father, your will, your promises, your deep heart's desires for us. And Father, we embrace that this morning. Father, we, we know that your face is shining upon us, that your countenance gives us peace. Your presence is around us. And Father, we commit our families to you. We commit our church to you. We commit, Father, every um, friendship that we have unto you. And we pray, Father God, that you will reveal yourself through us, to shout on the mountain tops, to shout on the rooftops, Father God, your goodness, your faithfulness over our lives, but not just about what you have done in our lives, but also who you are, to tell people about Jesus, to tell people about the goodness and the faithfulness of Jesus in our lives. And Father, I trust that you're going to extend your love beyond us, that it will not be limited to us, but that it will come to the fullness 
Father God, in uh, people's lives around us. We thank you, Father, that we can still spend time together and that your dreams have not changed, that uh, you can remind us now even about those dreams and that we can prophesy over them. Live in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.